Hey, sweet family, grace and peace to you all. I hope all is well with you as we are looking for our blessed hope. Every day brings us one day closer, and he will come. He said it, so he will do it. You can take that to the bank. So today's video is about the coming one world religion and what it will take to unite the masses under it. It is just hard for me to imagine people from so many different backgrounds and beliefs coming together under a single religion. I can more easily imagine a one world currency or even a one world government. But a one world religion just seems so far fetched. But the Bible says it will happen, so it will definitely happen. Most people I know are fairly set in their beliefs, or lack thereof. I am really curious as to how the followers of Islam and some of the Eastern religions will be drawn into following the false prophet, who many say is the Pope. They may be correct, as far as I know. The Reformers, way back in the day, they actually believed the Pope to be the Antichrist. But whoever is the false prophet, he will cause the world to unite in a one-world faith. We have seen the way the current Pope is pushing this agenda by promoting cooperation among the major religions. I'm sure you are also aware of the Abrahamic Family House in Abu Dhabi to open in 2022, which includes a synagogue, a church, and a mosque. I, br I searched briefly for an update on its completion. As far as I can tell, it is still on track to open later this year, but I could not find a definite date. However, I did find some interesting thoughts about how the One World Religion will unite in a book by Dave Hunt called A Woman Rides the Beast. If you get a chance to read this book, I recommend it. Also, there is a channel on YouTube that has the audio version available for free. I'll link it for you in the description box. Before we go any further, I want to confess I am no expert on faiths that are not based on Jesus' finished work on the cross. I have tried to be accurate in this video, but if I have misrepresented something, let me know. Also, I am not against Catholic or Islamic people. I have friends of both faiths who I love and who are sincere in their beliefs, although they are sincerely wrong. This video is not to bash them. I want all people everywhere, all the whosoevers of John 3.16 to place their faith in Jesus. Also, and finally, I may pr mispronounce some of the words related to Islam. My apologies for that in advance. I am from Texas, you know. So, in the book, Mr. Hunt suggests that all faiths will likely be united because they will agree about Mary, the mother of Jesus. That really surprised me. He says, We have identified the woman astride the beast as Vatican City and the false world church, which will eventually be headquartered there. But why a woman on the beast and not a man? Why is this false world church seen as a woman? Again, this criterion, like all of the others in Revelation 17, fits the Vatican perfectly. The most prominent figure by far in Roman Catholicism is a woman. She overshadows all else, including even God himself. More prayers are offered to the Catholic Mary, and more attention and honor is given to her than to Christ and God combined. There are thousands of shrines to Mary around the world, and hundreds of shrines to other, quote, saints, but scarcely more than a handful of minor shrines to Christ himself. Some Catholic leaders even boast that in this day of burgeoning, quote, goddess consciousness and, quote, women's liberation, the Catholic Church is right in tune with the times. A woman holds the position of highest honor and power. In Catholicism, it is a woman through whom all graces, gifts, blessings, and power flow. A woman who, as we shall see, has the amazing potential to unite the entire world, including even the Muslims, in one religion. He goes on to talk about how the real Mary of the Bible bears absolutely no likeness to the Catholic Mary, which is worshipped. All right, skipping forward a bit. Worldwide, today's women are asserting themselves as never before in history. Women are taking over what were once men's jobs, and there is a growing acceptance of women at the highest levels of leadership in business, government, and religion. Only God could have given John, 1900 years ago, a vision that so fits our day, a woman in control. From current trends, it seems inevitable that a woman must ride the beast. 
and of all the women in history, none rivals Roman Catholicism's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent Mary. As an aside, this book came out in 1994. The ecumenical power of this Mary is found in the fact that she provides a new deity to whom the followers of all religions can look, a female deity in step with the spirit of our age. Even Protestants find her appealing. Catholicism is a jump ahead. Its, quote Mary, a goddess suitable for all religions, is already adored by a quarter of the earth's population. Moreover, her ability to command the loyalty of multitudes has been demonstrated on a national level for centuries. And here's a brief history. Mary was declared queen of the Ukrainian people in 1037, and Hungary was dedicated to her by King St. Stephen at about the same time. Richard II solemnly consecra consecrated England to Mary as her dowry in 1381. France was consecrated to Mary in 1638 by the order of Louis XIII, who said, We consecrate to her particularly our person, our state, our crown, and our subjects. Poland in 1656 by King Casimir. All of the South American Spanish colonies were dedicated to Mary through a solemn consecration in 1643 at the command of King Philip IV. And in 1664, the same was done for Portugal and all her colonies at the, at the instigation of King John IV. Austria the following year. In 1846, the bishops of America wrote, We place ourselves and all are entrusted to our charge under the special patronage of the Holy Mother of God. I wasn't really aware of all the nations throughout history who had dedicated themselves to Mary. Maybe you knew about that, but that was kind of a surprise to me. But anyway, on to Mary and Islam and how they're going to interact. It's easy to imagine Buddhists, Hindus, New Agers, and liberals, as well as both Catholics and Protestants, uniting in a world religion, but the billion Muslims pose a special problem. Mary, however, seems to be the unique one through whom even they could be united into a universal faith. A British Catholic magazine reports that a Marian revival is spreading throughout Africa with alleged apparitions of the Virgin Mary finding a following among Muslims. African Muslims themselves are seeing apparitions of the Virgin Mary and are not required to become Christians to follow her. I thought that was key. A, a magazine called Our Sunday Visitor pointed out the honor given to Mary in Islam's Quran and the intriguing connection between her and Muhammad's favorite daughter, Fatima. Bishop Fulton J. Sheen, who is a prominent Catholic apologist, wrote an interesting book in which he predicted that Islam would be converted to Christianity through a summoning of the Muslims to a veneration of the Mother of God. He reasoned thus, The Quran has many passages concerning the Blessed Virgin. First of all, the Quran believes in her immaculate conception and also in her virgin birth. Mary, then, is for the Muslims the true Saida or Lady. The only possible serious rival to her in their creed would be Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad himself. But after the death of Fatima, Muhammad wrote, Thou shalt be the most blessed of all women in paradise after Mary. Sheen goes on to say how remarkable it was that, quote, Our Lady had the foresight to appear in the Portuguese village of Fatima, named after Muhammad's daughter during the Muslim occupation, and thus become known as Our Lady of Fatima. It is a fact that when a statue of Our Lady of Fatima is carried through Muslim areas of, areas of Africa, India, and elsewhere, Muslims turn out by the hundreds of thousands to worship her. In two days, an estimated 500,000 came to give their respects to this idol in Bombay, India. So that is the end of the part I wanted to share from Mr. Hunt's book, A Woman Rides the Beast. But I did go on to find a few more interesting articles just to show how widespread the influence of Mary is. Our Lady of Good Health 
in Bengaluru, formerly known as Bangalore, is the most prominent Catholic shrine in the city. Surrounded today by a predominantly Muslim neighborhood, the shrine buzzes with activity, especially in the early morning and the evening. It is home to a celebrated feast that culminates on September 8th each year, the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The shrine features a, a basilica church where there are masses and lay preaching and two other statues of the Virgin and Child in the outdoor arcades. Worshippers at the shrine include as many Hindus as Catholics, in part because Hindus tend to be comfortable drawing non-Hindu religious figures into their worship life. In interviews at the shrine, visitors said that they came for peace and to pray for prosperity for themselves and for all. They refer to Mary, especially as Mother Mary. The phrase, prosperity for all, came up as often as one might hear people pray for world peace in many other countries. The following is a short excerpt from an article I found uh, written by a Catholic priest on the Muslim reverence for the Virgin Mary in the Philippines. In the city of Zamboanga, on the island of Mindanao, in the Philippines, a Muslim high school student explained to his Jesuit teacher why he had missed class. Yesterday was the fiesta of the Virgin Mary, Nuestra Señora del Pilar, the student said. I visited her shrine at Fort Pilar to pray and ask for her help. For Christians and many Muslims of Zamboanga, the Virgin Mary symbolizes the city's culture, history, and destiny. A legend says the city will be destroyed if its people ever stop praying to Our Lady of Pilar, a devotion in Zamboanga dating back to the early 1700s. Many Muslims from the area are known to implore Mary's protection, particularly in difficult times or before they begin their pilgrimage to Mecca. Research to see what the similarities between Catholicism and Islam are. The following information comes from a Mr. David Nikau Wilcoxon. I'll link what I found in the description box for you so he gets full credit. The pagan beliefs of Roman Catholicism and Islam have much in common as they both oppose what the Word of God says. The end game of the Roman Catholic Church is to draw Muslims into Catholicism, so the more things that they have in common, the easier the transition. Following are the ways the two religions are similar. 1. Both Roman Catholicism and Islam revere the Blessed Virgin Mary. They both teach the concept of the Immaculate Conception of Mary. Famous Catholic Bishop Fulton J. Sheen, in his article, Mary and the Muslims, said, The Quran, which is the Bible of the Muslims, has many passages concerning the Blessed Virgin. First of all, the Quran believes in her Immaculate Conception and also in her virgin birth. Mary is mentioned 34 times in the Quran, and the 19th surah, or chapter, is named after her. After Muhammad's daughter Fatima, Mary is revered as blessed among all women by Orthodox Muslims. Bishop Sheen says, The two largest religions in the world believe in fervent devotion to Mary and hold her virtues in the very highest esteem. Mary is for the Muslims the true Saida, or Lady. But after the death of Fatima, Muhammad wrote, Thou shalt be the most blessed of all the women in paradise after Mary. How would Muhammad ever get this idea if it wasn't from Rome? This connection is being used to draw Muslims to the Roman Church. Both Roman Catholicism and Islam revere the moon god and sun god. Many images of the Catholic Virgin Mary show her standing over a crescent moon, and there are many sun worship images throughout the Catholic Church, including at St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican. The Eucharist wafer represents the sun god, which is placed on a crescent moon in the monstrance, representing their sexual union and the rebirth of their son Tammuz. Islamic mosques have the crescent moon representing the moon god and a star for the sun god. Many times you see pictures with the sun cradled in the Islamic moon symbol, representing their sexual union. Roman Catholicism and Islam both use prayer beads. Prayer beads are used to mark the repetitions of prayers, chants, or devotions. 
In Roman Catholicism, they are used to pray the rosary to the Virgin Mary. In Islam, the beads are traditionally used to keep count while saying the prayer known as the Tazbih of Fatima, which was a form of prayer offered as a gift by Muhammad to his daughter. Roman Catholicism and Islam both have pilgrimages. Roman Catholics flock to the Vatican to visit to visit St. Peter's Basilica. The Hajj is an annual Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca and a mandatory religious duty for Muslims that must be carried out at least once in their lifetime by all adult Muslims who are physically and financially capable of undertaking the journey. Roman Catholicism and Islam both believe in forced conversions by the sword and killing heretics. Islam is in the news today for killing Christians, and they have a history of doing so as they are the covert military arm of the Roman Catholic Church. Historians estimate that during the Dark Ages and the Inquisition, the Roman Catholic Church killed over 50 million people whom they deemed as heretics, most of which were Christians who dared to own a Bible, which the Church forbid, or they proclaimed the gospel of Christ. The History of the Rise and Influence of the Spirit of Rationalism in Europe, Volume 2, Documents That the Church of Rome has shed more innocent blood than any other institution that has ever existed among mankind will be questioned by no Protestant who has a complete knowledge of history. At one event remembered as the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, an estimated 100,000 Huguenots, Protestant Christians in France, they were all slaughtered. In Spain alone, the number of condemned exceeded 3 million, with about 300,000 burned at the stake during the length of the Spanish Inquisition. Roman Catholicism and Islam both have holy wars. Both religions are designed to wage war against their enemies. Islam was written to cause Muslims to war against Jews and the true followers of Christ. The Roman Catholic Church has a history of holy wars to overcome their enemies by using the military powers of countries that they control, such as France and Spain. Today they use the U.S. and Israeli intelligence agencies and military to carry out their holy wars. Now, I don't have evidence for that last statement, so I would recommend you look into that yourself to see if that's true. That's just what this article says. But moving on, both Islam and Catholics believe in angels. Catholics believe that angels are spiritual creatures who watch over us and serve God. Muslims believe that angels are celestial beings that are here to do certain tasks God gave them. Next, Both Islam and Catholics fast. Catholics fast during Lent, Muslims during Ramadan. And here are just a few final points. Both Catholics and Muslims believe in reward after death and punishment for sin. Both Catholics and Muslims respect the Old Testament figures, particularly Abraham. And some of the readers who commented on the blog also pointed out that both religions burn essence, I'm I'm sorry, incense, uh, and the scalp worn by the bishops, the Catholic bishops, is also worn by most Muslims. Uh, They also point out that the Catholic nuns use headscarves, and that is similar to what the Muslim women wear as well. So the similarities were like way more than I thought they would. And here is another example of cooperation between Catholics and Muslims and other religions over in the United Arab Emirates. This is the Mary Mother of Jesus Mosque in Abu Dhabi. It was built in 1989 and was originally called the Muhammad bin Zayed Mosque to honor the Crown Prince Muhammad bin Zayed al Dahayan, who is also the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. On June 14, 2017, the Crown Prince renamed the mosque the Mary Mother of Jesus Mosque. This change was meant to exemplify the values of coexistence among religions in the UAE and to consolidate bonds of humanity. As of 2015, there were at least two Catholic churches in Abu Dhabi as well as a Hindu temple. The government had actually granted them some land to build that there. Here's another one. This parade to honor Mary took place in Haifa, which is in Israel on the coast. 
The priest is talking about how Mary always gathers all her children. I'm quoting him. She gathers all her children from all the Holy Land, from Bethlehem, from all the villages of Palestine, and from all the villages of Galilee, and the whole country. More than 20,000 people in Israel came to celebrate their mother. As you can see, the parade goers sing and chant and pull the statue from the center of town up to, the, up to Mount Carmel to the monastery. The tradition began in 1919 when the statue of the Virgin was returned after World War I. This parade is a way that Catholics in Israel express their gratitude to Mary for supposedly protecting the city during the war. This lady being interviewed is talking about how she has dedicated her children, family, husband, and whole life to Mary. And you can see that many of the girls dress up like Mary for this event. Are you as surprised as I am to see Catholicism in Israel of all places? So to conclude this video and maybe give you something to consider that it's very possible Mary will be the big player who will help the false prophet to unite the whole world under one false religion. Maybe the Catholic Mary, who can make a home for herself in all the false religions worldwide, really is the woman who rides the beast. I know I learned quite a bit that I didn't know in researching this video. I hope this was helpful to you, my sweet family. The great news is that we don't have to worry about this one world religion, because this all takes place after the rapture of the church. We have nothing to fear. But isn't it fascinating watching it all come together here in these last days? Well, that's it for this one. Much love to you, my sweet family. We are one day closer. If you are wondering how to be saved and how to go in the rapture, hang around because I'm going to tell you. Maybe you're watching this video, but you do not have a relationship with Jesus. No, it is no accident you are here. I promise you the only place to find the truth is in Christ Jesus and His Word, the Bible. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. God wants to give you the free gift of eternal life. He offers it to all, but it is through Christ alone. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but should have eternal life. Salvation is as simple as believing Jesus died on the cross, shedding his blood for your sins, and rose on the third day. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Once you place your faith in Jesus, you are eternally secure, sealed by the Holy Spirit. You are adopted as a child of the Most High God. You now have no fear of death, for when you die you will go to heaven, rather than spend an eternity in hell separated from God. You also do not need to fear your future because God holds your future in His loving, strong hands. I pray you will all believe on Jesus today. Love you.